Okay, so today we're going to talk about the power theorems. That's why it has the title there, the power theorems. This particular lesson is all about segment length. You will not, let's listen please, you will not be using Pythagorean theorem. You're going to be using one of three different power theorems. Okay, and we're going to talk about each one. So the first one, you don't have to highlight it, uh, but the first one is called the chord chord power theorem. And the way I would use, recognize this one, the picture, if you look to the right, you see I have two chords, hence the chord chord power theorem. So if we read through it, break it down, it says if two chords of a circle intersect inside the circle, I'm going to pause there. These two chords, they intersect right here at point G, so they intersect inside the circle. It says, then the product of the measures of the segments of one chord, so help me out here, what does product mean I'm doing? Adding. Try that again. Subtracting. Try that one more time. Multiply. Yes, product means we multiply. So the product of the measures of the segments, let's pl listen please. The product of the measures of the segments of one chord is equal to the product of the segments of the other chord. So you're breaking the chord, each chord up into two pieces. So if I look at segment CD first, this particular chord, one part of the chord is segment CG. So if I take CG times, the other part of that chord is segment DG. So I'm going to multiply these two pieces together. That product is equal to the product of the pieces of the other chord. So we would have EG times GF. So again, the product of these two pieces is equal to the product of these two pieces. So their products are equal. This is the chord chord power theorem. So if we look at this particular example, if I zoom in here, make it easier to see. So again, notice I've got two chords that intersect. Hold on, please. So again, I've got these two chords that intersect inside the circle. So if I'm looking at the picture, if I look at this chord first, the two pieces are 3 and x. So I'm going to take 3 times x equals the product of the pieces of the other chord. The two pieces are 5 and 9, so that equals 5 times 9. And then we're going to work it out. 3 times x is 3x. 5 times 9 is 45. So if I'm going to continue to solve for x, we're going to divide both sides by 3. So x is going to be 15. So again, this is what we call the chord chord power theorem because we have two chords. Okay, so I said all along we were going to take a look back at that worksheet each time. So if I take a look at um, number 3, for instance, on the worksheet. Okay, so again, if I look at number three, let's do one chord at a time. What are the two pieces off of the chord that I highlighted here in yellow first? So I'm going to take 2x times 10. That equals the product of the pieces of the other chord. What are the two pieces off of the other chord? Okay, good. X plus 2 times 12. So now I'm going to use my algebra skills to solve. So first off, if I look on the left side, what's 2x times 10? So I have 20x equals. On the right side, I need to distribute my 12. So x times 12 is 12x, and then 2 times 12 is 24. Okay, hold on. Hold on, please. Everybody see where I got this equation from? So now if I'm going to solve for x, I'm going to subtract 12x from each side. So what's 20x minus 12x? So if 8x equals 24, to finish, I'm going to divide both sides by 8. So x is going to be 3. Okay, questions on this? This is, again, the chord-chord power theorem because we have two chords. Oh, okay, that's fine. Which question does it switch over? Five? What? Yeah, so the first four questions on the worksheet 
are like the first power theorem, the chord chord power theorem. And as you can tell, there are not 20 problems today. I think there's, what, 14 if I looked correctly? Mm -hmm. So they got a part about each one. So when we're in just a moment, we're going to move on to the next one, which is the tangent secant power theorem. And this is going to look like the next set on our worksheet. So you're still going to have to use your algebra skills to solve. Um, but you're going to use your geometry, one of your power theorems, to set it up. Okay? So, let's look at the second one. This one is called the tangent secant power theorem. And to me, it makes sense because if you look at the picture, segment CE is my tangent. And segment DE is the secant. Hence the tangent secant concept. So if we read through this, it says, if a tangent segment and a secant segment are drawn from an external point to a circle, this external point in this picture is point E. It's drawn, here's my tangent, here's my secant. Okay, so it says, then the square of the measure of the tangent segment. Okay, so let's break this down. Which one is my tangent segment again? The red one, CE. Tangent is the yellow one, CE. So if it says square it, I'm going to square it. So segment CE squared. So again, the tangent squared is equal to, so I put an equal sign here, the product of the measure of the entire secant segment and its external part. So the entire secant segment means the whole thing. So the whole thing would be referred to segment DE. And again, product means I'm going to multiply. So whole thing and then times its external part. That's the part outside the circle. So out of this whole orange section here, the part outside the circle is Fe. So again, tangent squared equals whole thing times outside piece. DE times Fe. And this is the way this one works. My opinion, the chord, chord one is probably the easiest one to deal with. But they each have their own set of rules. So if we take a look at this particular example without yelling out the answers, I have my tangent here, and this is my secant. So again, we're going to square the tangent. So we're going to say y squared equals. It says the entire secant segment. I got to do a little adding here. How long is this whole secant segment? 18 or 16. 16. I would take 4 plus 12 to get 16. And then times, which of these two pieces is the part outside the circle? Four. The 4. So again, y squared equals 16 times 4. So now I'm going to solve for y. So to do that, I'm going to multiply 16 times 4, which is 64. So to find y, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. What's the square root of 64? 8. Eight. Okay, so um, somebody in here, Joe, how about you pick a problem five, six, seven, or eight on the worksheet? Eight. Okay, so let's take a look at number eight together, please. Okay, is there anybody still? Okay, bless you. So while we're waiting for everybody to finish up writing, if you want, go ahead and try number eight for me, please. Um, we're going to do it together in just a minute. We can compare answers and see if we're on the right track. Okay, so if we zoom in a little bit for number eight, again, hopefully you notice this is a tangent and a secant. So it applies to this power theorem. So can somebody please tell me which one in the picture is my tangent? Six. So I'm going to say the tangent squared, so six squared equals. Now, I need the whole secant segment. Four plus eight. Okay. Does everybody understand why? why it's 4 plus x. You're going to have to add them together. In our example, we were able to actually add 4 plus 12 to get 16. In this picture, we would add 4 plus x, and I can't combine them any more than that. So the whole thing times what's the part of the secant that's outside the circle? 4. Okay, so now I'm going to use my algebra skills to work this out. What is 6 squared? 
So 36 equals, and I'm going to distribute my 4. What's 4 times 4? 16 plus, what's x times 4? 4x. Four four x. Now if I'm going to continue to solve for x, what am I going to do next? Yep, subtract 16. Hold on, please. So 4x equals, what's 36 minus 16? 20. So therefore, x equals 5. Where do we get the 4 Here? Okay, so you're going to take the whole thing, which is 4 plus x, times the outside piece. So it's the part outside the circle, which is 4. Just like we said here, you're going to take the whole thing, which was segment DE, times the outside piece, which is FE. They're all similar to that, though, aren't they? Don't they all have the X in the kind of same spot? We can do one more. Which one do you want to do? Okay, so... You still writing, Natalie? Okay, so let's take a look at number five, then. This one has bigger numbers, um, but the same concept. Does everybody see the tangent and the secant? Okay, so which one is the tangent? Okay, so the tangent gets squared. So we're going to say 24 squared equals... Okay, how long is the whole secant? Okay, 18 plus x. I'd have to add them together. And then what's the part that's outside the circle then? Off of this one. Is it the X or the 18? Which piece is outside the circle? 18. 18. Okay, so does that make sense where I got my equation from? Okay, so now we're going to distribute. Uh, can somebody please tell me what 24 squared is? Say that again. 576. So 576. Okay, now i got to distribute my 18 here. So what's 18 times 18? 324. 324. And then plus, what's X times 18? Okay, so just like the previous problem, I need to get x on a side by itself. So my next step, what am I going to do? Okay, so if I subtract 324 from both sides, you said I get 252, and that equals 18x. So if I'm going to continue to solve for x, I'm going to do what? Divide by 18. So what is, I'm hoping it worked out nice here. It's 14. Okay, so this tangent secant power theorem, Where did flip it over to the back. Does it go up to questions that look like number 10? Yeah? Okay, so that's set. 5 through 10 are like this tangent secant power theorem. Let me set up for today. Okay, are we ready for the last of the three? Okay. Oh, number nine looks different. Yes, it is. Okay, so the last of the three is the secant secant power theorem. And again, the reason we call it the secant secant power theorem, if you look at the picture, I've got two secants. So again, if you're trying to determine the difference between them, this one is chord chord because I've got two chords. This one is the tangent secant, because one is a tangent, one is a secant. And then this one, again, is a secant secant, because they're both secants. So if we read through our concept here, it says, if two secant segments are drawn from an external point to a circle, so here's my outside point, again, drawn to a circle, then the product, so we're going to multiply, so the product of the measures of one secant segment and its external part is equal to the product of the other secant segment and its external part. So basically we're saying whole thing times outside piece equals whole thing times outside piece. So one of my secants, the whole thing, would be the segment from A to C. So I would say AC times the outside piece off of this secant is segment BC. So whole thing times outside piece. The other secant segment, the whole thing, runs from E to C. So I would say EC times its outside piece, which is segment DC. 
So again, general rule, if it's a secant secant, whole thing times outside piece, whole thing times outside piece. So if we take a look at our last example here, we are going to solve for Z. Z, notice, is referring to this whole thing. So again, my rule, whole thing times outside piece. So if I look at the top here, if I do one secant at a time, how long is this whole secant segment? Okay, but the whole thing is actually showing from here to here is Z, right? So I'm gonna say the whole thing is Z times what's the outside piece? Three. So whole thing times the outside piece. If I look at the other secant segment, if I just trace it in orange here, how long is this whole secant? 15, right? Here I'm gonna add them. 10 plus five is 15. So 15 times what's this, what's this one's outside piece? Five. Okay, so Z times three is actually three Z. 15 times five is what? 75. So if I'm gonna continue to solve for Z, I would divide both sides by three. So Z would be 25. Okay, so um, in a moment here, Hayden, would you like to pick a problem out of the last four? Okay. Okay, so in just a moment here, we're going to take a look at number 12. If you feel like you know what you're doing, go for it. Uh, we will put it up under the screen in just a moment. So again, there's one of three rules to deal with today, either chord, chord, tangent, secant, or secant, secant. You just gotta look at the picture to figure out which one it is. Okay, everybody good? Okay, so if we look at number 12. So again, hopefully we notice it's a secant, secant, because there's two secants here. Okay, so let's start with this one here in yellow. How long is this whole secant? 30. I would take 21 plus 9 to get 30. So 30 times, what's the outside piece? 9. So 30 times 9. How long is the other whole secant? 5. Okay, the whole thing is going to be what? 10 plus. 10 plus x. Everybody understand why I'm going to add? This part is x, this part is 10. So the whole thing would be 10 plus t x or x plus 10, whichever you prefer, times what's the outside piece? 10. So we're going to multiply and distribute so we can solve. So what is 30 times 9? 270. 270 equals what's 10 times 10? Plus what's x times 10? 10x. 10x. So my next step is we're going to subtract 100 from both sides. So 270 minus 100 is 170. X equals 17. Yep. If I divide both sides by 10, then X is 17. Okay. So if you haven't figured it out already, uh, your assignment for today is to finish the worksheet.